What's up, guys? Apologies for the delay in uploading this series. However, I'm committed to continuing it now, even if it's only the latest update of this manhua. Your support means the world to me. Thank you. In this chapter, everyone is taken aback by the sudden appearance of the third great sage. Has she grown so quickly? Another man questions whether she was absent during the trial. The third great sage clarifies that the one left outside is merely a remnant, while she herself is the true trial examiner. Ning Tian, upon seeing the third great sage, realizes why she resembles the little girl. The third trial involves the ancient tree behind her. Teams of ten people will form, and the ancient tree will give birth to light species, each containing weapons. Among them, there are various spiritual weapons, and even an immortal one. After hearing the third great sage's words, everyone rejoices. One man asks about the corresponding number. Does everyone get one? Another man confirms that luck might grant someone the immortal weapon. However, there's a catch. Within the time it takes for an incense stick to burn, only the person who obtains the immortal weapon will survive. Shocked, they wonder if this means nine others must die. Ning Tian deduces that the path to godhood involves destroying the emperor's path. The third great sage playfully asks if he noticed something. Recalling the battle to become a god, Ning Tian explains how countless cultivators fought to reach that goal. Some never even made it to the battlefield. Now, the third great sage aims to recreate that battle, albeit with a twist. The path to godhood lies in obtaining the immortal weapon. Despite the short distance from shore to the heart of the lake, the third great sage's challenge is intriguing. As Ning Tian ponders, the third great sage's laughter fills the air. The third stage begins with Ning Tian. The third great sage's power surprises everyone as she lifts them into the air. Ning Tian remains cautious suspecting ill intentions among the six righteous disciples and three strong celestial cultivators. Behind Ning Tian stands a man, smiling as he observes. His thoughts echo. There's always a way if you wait, Ning Tian. Today, destiny decrees that you'll meet your end at his hands. The third great sage smiles, her voice calm as she imparts three crucial reminders. First, once the third stage begins, the weapons concealed within the light specs will remain invisible. Second, touching a light speck locks your choice. It cannot be altered or snatched by others. Third, failure to touch a speck within the allotted time carries dire consequences. As everyone advances toward the treasure, a man taunts a dragon, dismissing the notion of destroying the emperor's path to godhood as pretentious. But the dragon proves formidable. Its attacks narrowly evaded by the man. Ning Tian Tu dances with danger, avoiding the dragon's onslaught. Unexpectedly, an assailant strikes Ning Tian from behind. His reflexes save him, and he recognizes the attacker, the Lin scoundrel who covets others' wives. Amidst the chaos, the man taunts Ning Tian's low rank, claiming superiority. Young Master Xiao Yao, an eight star cultivator, joins the assault. Ning Tian's anger flares. He taps into his power, a golden aura radiating from his body. The third great sage observes, surprised by more than just his thunder tribulation spiritual vein. Ning Tian invokes Sword Dao, attacking with lethal precision. Onlookers marvel at his speed, urging each other to circulate their auras. But Ning Tian dispatches them effortlessly. The system confirms elementary earth rank martial arts, sword tracing shadow activated. His sword obeys his will. And all those people are killed. And among them, there's only one man, a kid, who's very shocked and is saying, he killed five people in an instant. How is that kid so strong? And then Ning Tian comes behind that man and says to him, how can you lose your calm during a battle? Before that man understands anything, Ning Tian attacks him with a heavenly demonic palm, due to which that man starts going directly towards the dragon's mouth, and the dragon eats that man. Seeing this, those people get very surprised, and one of them is saying, 
so strong, he wiped out six people in the blink of an eye. Then Ning Tian looks back and is thinking, damn it, Lin Xiaoyao delayed me too much. They have already made their choice. System, activate the treasure hunt card. As soon as the treasure hunt card gets activated, Ning Tian starts moving towards those people very fast. We see a man about to take the immortal weapon, and he is very happy. But then, that man notices something. When he looks ahead, he sees Ning Tian moving towards a treasure. Seeing this, the man thinks, how did he know that's the immortal weapon? This boy is the heavenly demonic sex patriarch, so he must have a way to hunt for treasures given to him by the empress. That must really be the immortal weapon. Then, that man attacks Ning Tian to stop him from taking that immortal weapon, and Ning Tian notices his attack, and with great difficulty, dodges his attack. Ning Tian says to that man, he saw it first. But that man doesn't pay much attention to Ning Tian's words and tries to take the immortal weapon directly. He says to Ning Tian, but he got to it first. Everyone sees that the man is about to take the immortal weapon. So they get very angry saying, damn it, he picked the immortal weapon. He's so sloppy. Ning Tian thinks, ah, uh, now that it came to it, he can only begrudgingly choose the actual immortal weapon. As Ning Tian reaches for the real immortal treasure, everyone is shocked. A strong golden-colored energy emanates as Ning Tian happily exclaims, Indeed, the intermediate stage immortal weapon. Great immortal Guqing. Ning Tian secures the real immortal treasure. The angry man confronts Ning Tian, accusing him of trickery. This immortal weapon was meant to be mine, he insists. Ning Tian smiles and retorts, but he got to it first. The man shouts, saying, you're the heavenly demonic sex patriarch. How can he be so shameless and despicable? His sect has lost all its face because of him. Undeterred, Ning Tian replies, there's no shame in doing what it takes to succeed. Say to him that, weren't you the same? Saying this, blood spills from the man's mouth. Meanwhile, a red-haired observer remarks, one sentence from the patriarch was enough to make a cultivator in the Sky King realm spit blood. He's worthy of his title. His partner adds, if he had the patriarch's shameless spirit, he would definitely lead the Tianbao Holy Land into becoming the richest power. The system congratulates Ning Tian, awarding him the title the shameless, and increasing his character's defense. The host shouldn't be surprised, as anything the host can imagine, this system can do. But Ning Tian is not happy with the reward system, and he is thinking, ha, huh, what the hell is this title? But then all the people together move forward to attack Ning Tian, trying to snatch his immortal treasure. They say, brat, even if he die, he will definitely catch him. Before they can attack Ning Tian, someone intervenes and kills the assailant. The third great sage is revealed as the one behind this act. She declares, the stage is over. According to the rules, only one shall survive. You actually found the real immortal weapon, saying I underestimated your skills. Ning Tian retorts to the third great sage, what? You can't bear to part with it? You didn't say we have to return it. Angrily, she responds, Think I am? Wait here until the others pass their test. Ning Tian contemplates the situation. Although she mentioned a three-stage trial, who knows what surprises she has in store. To ensure his safety, Ning Tian decides to establish himself as the immortal weapons master. He uses his blood to mark the treasure, and a brilliant golden light emanates. Ning Tian realizes it's a soul-bound immortal weapon, attuned to the Tao of music. Its attacks can harm the opponent's soul, a true immortal weapon. The system informs Ning Tian that his perception of the Tao of music has increased. Ning Tian's mind races as he contemplates the implications. If the immortal weapon is bound by the soul, did he inadvertently touch the Yao Qi saint's Guqin? her very essence? His imagination runs wild, 
and a blush creeps onto his face. It's just a soul connection, he reassures himself, not a true touch. It's nothing. An hour passes, and four figures approach Ning Tian. The third great sage addresses them, acknowledging the dwindling numbers. So few remain, she observes. Five survivors, a better outcome than expected. The others express relief, thinking it's finally over. Can we leave now, they ask, but the third great sage dampens their celebration. Don't rejoice too soon, she warns. The final stage awaits. Shocked, everyone listens. Ning Tian, however, remains resolute. Just as he expected, he mutters. And then, with an otherworldly power, the third great sage invokes something rare. Void transpose? Only a great emperor can wield such magic. As long as he can pass the last stage, the inheritance and the many treasures within the tomb shall be yours. Saying this, and after listening to the third great sage, all four people become very happy. One of them says, Great emperor, that he want to try. Suggesting this, the other man agrees, saying, Yes, that no matter what, we want to join. Saying this, the third great sage drops a bombshell. The last stage is to kill him. The shock is palpable among all five people, and silence fills the room. Ning Tian finally speaks up, asking the third great sage if his senior serious, demanding if it's impossible for them to join forces and kill him with their current abilities. The sage responds, no, not by joining forces, but in one-on-one. -on -one. That's the end of it. Thank you guys. See you in the next update.